Hello, it's Caitlin Jenkins, the Family Law Vlogger here. Um, and on the vlog today, we're going to look at some international tips and tricks that I just wanted to flag. First of all, though, an apology for those who are subscribers to the channel. I think the last video that I uploaded uh, on international stuff actually didn't have any volume. So hopefully this will have corrected it. So why these tips and tricks around international issues? Well, it occurred to me that there are various things that people often misunderstand about their situation if they're separating or getting divorced in England and Wales about an international element. And this um, was prioritised to me or flagged to me, I suppose, when I went to a recent uh, meeting of the International Academy of Family Lawyers, which of which I'm a member. So the International Academy is what it says on the tin. It's a connection of international family lawyers from across the globe who specialise in aspects of family law that are, have an international element. So it's a bunch of like-minded family lawyers who specialise in these sorts of areas. And the three things that sort of came out of that international meeting that I just thought it might be useful to flag on the vlog are as follows. One is around jurisdiction for divorce. So very often when people are separating, they sort of make an assumption about what jurisdiction, which country has jurisdiction to get divorced. And that assumption is not always right. So the classic is people sometimes assume that they can only get divorced in the country where they got married. But that isn't, I mean, it might be the case, but it isn't necessarily the case. So for example, a couple who've been in living in England for years but happen to get married in France may well be able to get divorced in England, even though they married in France and indeed may be French. Now, there may be a conflict of jurisdictions that are available, so it's best to take advice. But that assumption that just because where you got married is, is where you get divorced is not really necessarily the case. So in a, the first sort of tip and area that you need advice on. The second area was around prenups. So Premarital agreements are quite commonplace across the globe, um, as they are becoming in England and Wales jurisdictions as well. But there's often an assumption that just because you have a prenup in one country, that it will automatically apply in the other. And again, that's a fundamental misunderstanding around what may well actually be the case in the local law. Now, in England and Wales, if you have a prenup in England, have a look at the vlogs about the impact of that on, on a separation and divorce. But if you have a prenup in another country, so for example, that couple I gave the example of before, who got married in France, they may have a, a French prenup or a, a French marital contract. And that may provide various things for what should happen during their marriage or on their separation. That prenup won't necessarily be binding in England, even if it might be binding in France. So again, just because you have a prenup in one country doesn't necessarily mean it's binding in the other. It, you need advice on it. It might be binding, it might be influential, but you can't assume that it will be. And then the third area, just to flag, is around movement of children around the world for international families. So people often assume that uh, if they want to move from one jurisdiction to another and the children are living with them, then they can automatically move the children with them. Now, if you've got a couple who are both agreeing to that, then that's fine, isn't it? That works. But if you've got a separated family, so for example, mum and dad living in London, two children spending more of their time with mum than they are with dad. Mum decides after a separation or after a divorce that she wants to move back to her country of origin, for example, maybe Germany. Mum, under the English law at the moment, could move back to Germany. But what mum couldn't do is move the children, if they've been living here and their habitual residences here, back to Germany with her unless dad agrees or there's an order of a court allowing that, that those children to be moved out of this jurisdiction and go and live permanently in another jurisdiction. So again, often a trap or a, a sort of tip that people aren't really aware of that I just thought I'd flag. So those are my top three international tips for today on the blog. As always with the Family Law blog, I can only give general ideas and, and, and scenarios. And if you need advice on your circumstances, then please do contact me or one of the specialist family and children lawyers at the Mills and Reed family team. Thank you very much.